Welcome to Sporty's IFR Insight Series, getting the most from your instrument rating. I'm Spencer Suderman. Some of you may remember me from the Sporty's Advanced Pilot Skills Series. In this episode, we're going to fly the full RNAV approach into Cecil Airport in Jacksonville, Florida. This approach starts with a procedure turn hold entry to reverse course direction and concludes with a circle to land maneuver on a different runway. This was flown in VFR conditions, so you can easily visualize what is happening in this sequence. The video starts with a complete approach plate briefing. However, if you want to go directly to the in-flight action, just click ahead. I'll be departing from Jacksonville Executive at Craig Airport for a short flight to Cecil, 20 nautical miles to the southwest. In ForeFlight, from the map screen, I pinch zoom out until both airports are in view, then a quick tap on Cecil brings up the airport information. A quick tap on the Direct 2 button and a course line appears on the map. Then I tap the Flight Plan button at the top, then hit Procedures. I select the Approach button to bring up the Approaches tab, then select RNAV GPS Runway 9 right to bring up the transitions. This is just a list of the initial approach fixes to start from, or I can select vectors to final if I'm expecting that or told that while en route by ATC. For this flight, since I'm arriving from the east and the final approach course is eastbound, I want to fly the full approach with the procedure turn hold, so I'll pick Zormi as the initial approach fix, then tap add to route. Now the entire flight, including the hold entry, is shown on the map screen with the approach plate overlaid. Now let's brief the approach top to bottom and left to right. First, we check the date to ensure the approach plate is current. Next, we check the location. This is Jacksonville, Florida, Cecil Airport, RNAV, Runway 9. Notice the final approach course is 95 degrees. The runway length for landing is 8,003 feet. That's plenty for a Cessna 172. The touchdown zone elevation is 77 feet. Moving down to the notes, we see a T in a black triangle which means there are IFR takeoff minimums and or departure procedures in Section L of the Terminal Procedures publication. Since today's flight will be conducted as a practice approach in visual meteorological conditions, I needn't be concerned. There is also an A in a black triangle, which means there are alternate minimums, which apply when using this airport and approach as an alternate when filing an IFR flight plan. This also doesn't apply to today's flight. The actual notes mainly concern altimeter setting availability and how that could affect minimums for this approach. The next box tells us that the runway has a medium intensity approach lighting system with runway alignment indicator lights flashing in sequence. That little dot picture to the right resembles the lighting layout. The last box on this row is the missed approach procedure. All missed approaches start with a climb and this one is to 700 feet straight ahead, then start a right turn and continue climbing to 2,000 feet, then hold at Cora as pictured in the lower right corner of the plan view section. Moving down to the next row is the frequencies in the order they are needed. First you get the ATIS, then talk to approach for clearance and advisories, then get handed off to tower for landing. The plan view section is next, and this is a top-down look at the approach. One of my favorite things about ForeFlight and this graphical overlay is how easy it is to understand the flight path through the entire approach. The magenta line is our arrival from the east direct to Zormi, which must be crossed no lower than 2,000 feet. ForeFlight is showing us a teardrop entry into the hold at Zormi, which is labeled as both an intermediate fix and an initial approach fix. Zormi is the intermediate fix when entering the hold, then it becomes the initial approach fix when heading eastbound on the final approach course. After crossing Zormi inbound to the runway, we can descend no lower than 1,800 feet to cross the final approach fix at Charles, which is also where the glide path intercept will occur since we are flying this as an LPV approach. Something else interesting happens at Charles. The final approach course changes from 94 degrees to 95 degrees. As long as the CDI and glide path is properly followed, this most likely will go unnoticed. Just fly the airplane. The next section is the profile view, which has the same information as the plan view, just presented looking at the airplane from the side as it flies the approach. The distances for each segment are shown at the bottom and improve situational awareness for comparison to the GPS distance on the primary flight display. 
The bottom section shows the minimums for the different versions of the approach. Since the goal is to circle to runway 36, we must use the circling minimum under category A. This is for planes like the Cessna 172 that fly approaches at under 90 knots. If the approach were to terminate on runway 9, then the decision altitude is 351 feet with three quarter miles of visibility needed. Since the plan is to circle to runway 36, the minimum is 540 feet with one mile of visibility. Also keep in mind that the circling portion of the approach must occur within 1.3 miles of the runway. Circling approaches present an additional element of risk, particularly if the weather is at the minimums. Pilots should remain at or above the circling minimum descent altitude until the aircraft is continuously in a position from which a descent to a landing on the intended runway can be made using normal maneuvers. More on this later when it's being flown. Now let's go up to 3,000 feet heading west over Jacksonville, Florida after VFR departure from Craig Airport. Jack Pro, Cessna 182 Mike Alpha request. 182 Mike Alpha approach. Approach 182 Mike Alpha, uh, just between Craig and Navy Jack. I'd like to do a practice approach, uh, runway 09 at Cecil. I have information, Lima. All right, squawk 0423. 0423, 42 Mike Alpha. Jack Approach, Caravan 518, Juliet, Juliet, uh, uh, level 1, 1000, we're direct by F. 182 Mike Alpha, radar contact. 22 Mike Alpha, Roger. I'd like to make this the full approach for uh, our Navarro and 09. Okay, there's going to be another controller working you in there. Contact them 2777. Make your request with them. 12777, 22 Mike Alpha, so long. Approach runway 31, contact San Augustine Tower. Awesome. Jack's approach, Cessna 182, Mike Alpha, level 3000. Number 182, Mike Alpha, and did you check in? 182, Mike Alpha, level 3000. I'd like to get the full runway 09 RNAV approach. Roger, you can expect that here in just a moment. Number 2, Mike Alpha, you can proceed at direct Zormi for the procedure turn there for the RNAV. What did you want to do after that? Direct Zormi for the RNAV. Uh, this will be a low approach, and then I want to do an ILS into 3 2 at Craig with a circle of 5. Roger. Number 182, Mike Alpha, after the approach at Cecil Flatting 160, maintain VFR and return to this frequency. After the approach at Cecil, fly heading 160, return to this frequency for 182, Mike Alpha. Number 2, Mike Alpha, did you want to circle to 36 right or are you just doing the straight in RNAV approach? I want to circle to 36 right uh, after the 09 RNAV for 182, Mike Alpha. Roger, you can expect that. The procedure turn hold for this approach at Zormi, both the 4th flight and 1000 are showing it as a teardrop entry. This is one of the things that makes it easy, is it shows you exactly how to make the entry into the hold. You don't really have to think about it. Which angle am I coming at it? Is this going to be a teardrop, a parallel, or a direct entry? Uh, it's seven and a half miles from Zormi. Number two, Mike Alpha, you just want one turn at Zormi for the full approach, correct? That's affirmative, 182, Mike Alpha. Two, Mike Alpha, Roger, you're four from Zormi, cleared for the full RNAV 9 right, circle to 36 right. Clear for the full RNAV 9 right, circle to 36 right for 182, Mike Alpha. I've been cleared for the approach. I'm going to start a descent to the uh, 2,000 feet. The altitude it's shown at. The power out to about 1,800 RPM. The descent commence. Ending at about, about 700 feet a minute. Department is telling me turn left to 257 in four seconds. And I'm on the outbound leg. All I need to do is follow along with the moving map. The information on my primary flight display. Turn right, 095 now is what the GPS is telling me. Doing a standard rate turn.
Once I cross Zormi on the inbound side, I can descend to 1,800 feet. Well, Charles, where I should intercept the glide path. And look at that, we're established on the inbound course. Uh, we still have about 3.7 to Zormi, and I have to cross Zormi at 2,000 feet. Get the airplane slowed down. It configured for the approach. 1.8 from Zormi. Number two, Mike Alpha, contact the tower, 126.1, good day. 1261, for Cecil Tower, 182, Mike Alpha, so long. Cecil Tower, 182 Mike Alpha, just outside of Zormi. So, uh, 182 Mike Alpha, Cecil Tower, report uh, circling south for runway 36 right. Report circling south for 36 right, 182 Mike Alpha. So I'm across Zormi, I can descend to 1,800 feet. We got a lot of time to get down there, five miles to Charles at this point. We're not supposed to be below 1,800 when we cross Charles, so we'll add a little power back in and to maintain about 1,850 feet. Side path is coming in now. 4.4 from Charles. Planes configured, double checking. Okay, I've got the glide path. I just need to stay on the final approach course and on the glide path. Small adjustment. If I get below it, I need to pick the nose up. I need to add power. And if I need to push the nose down, I need to reduce power. See that? It's getting a little below. I'll pull a little power out, push the nose down a bit. Pink diamond back on its line. There it is. I'm going to add the power back in. When I'm within 1.3 nautical miles, I can initiate circle. We're inside of Tawi, 1.8. That's 780 it's for 540. 680 for 540. 40 for 540. I have 1.3 of the runway in sight, so I'm going to initiate my circle to the south, and I'll just hold this altitude. Tower, right to my gal for circling south. Cessna 182 Mike Alpha, Roger. And runway 36 right, clear for the option. Clear for the option, runway 36 right, 182 Mike Alpha. Normally, this LPV approach would conclude with a landing straight into runway 9. I'm flying the circle to land in VFR conditions to demonstrate how it's done. During the circle to land part of the approach, Keep the power in to maintain the airspeed at 90 knots and the plane no lower than MDA until you're ready to make the final descent to the runway. I'm on the circle, I've got the airport in sight. The AM26 assess the circling for 36 right, runway 36 left, clear for the option. I could turn in now. base for 360. The goal is to fly a standard traffic pattern shape with a close-in base leg at the lower altitude, then make a normal landing within the first one-third of the runway. If at any time you lose sight of the airport environment, start a missed approach immediately by adding full power and climbing, then turn towards the landing runway to intercept the published missed approach course. Avoid excessive bank angles while maneuvering and keep an eye on the airport. When you turn final, look for the visual indications of glide slope, such as the Vassy or Pappy. If the circle to land runway doesn't have glide slope indicator lights, then use your best judgment to decide when to leave the minimum descent altitude. Minimums, minimums. All right, make my descent. As soon as you're confident the runway's made, then reduce power to slow the plane down and add the next notch of flaps. For this flight, the intention is to execute a low approach, then depart. However, if the goal was to land, the workload can get intense starting on the base to final turn as you reduce throttle, control the pitch to slow down, and lower the flaps in rapid sequence. 
It's a good idea to practice this kind of fast and close approach during normal pattern work to become familiar with it. Hold it at 200 feet. All right, flaps come up. So it's to Mike Alpine, you actually climb out as instructed, contact Jack's departure, have a good day. Climb as instructed, contact Jack's departure. 182 Mike Alpha, so long. Thanks for riding along, and I hope this flight gave you a feel for what instrument flying is all about. To take the next step, check out Sporty's instrument rating course, which includes 13 hours of in-flight HD cross-country and instrument approach video training and comprehensive written test preparation tools. You can learn more about the course, as well as find a large collection of new articles, videos, quizzes, and podcasts, all geared towards IFR flying at sporties.com slash IFR. And if you're like me from a few years ago, these resources are a great way to get current too if you have an instrument rating and are out of practice. Fly safe.